Hey guys, welcome back to this per unit tutorial. This is part two of tutorial nine. In the previous tutorial, part one, we were able to calculate the per unit values of all these electrical components that make up this electrical network. So we have a generator, we have a transformer, a transmission line, another transformer stepping down, and we have the load connected just like we have this illustration here that is a power station generator the transformer transmission line uh, another power transformer and you have your load okay now in this tutorial we're going to continue where we left off because we were asked to draw the per unit as impedance diagram okay and then to calculate the per unit impedances and the line current flowing in the load transmission line and the generator so the currents are so first we need to know the current that is flowing in the load so that is this current that is this current that's I load and then we need to know the current flowing in the transmission line that is this current and the current flowing out of the generator or into the generator so that is that current IG okay but in order to determine those current, you first have to determine all the per unit values. And that what we did on the previous tutorial, part one. If you haven't watched that tutorial yet, there is a link in the description box. Okay, so let's now draw the per unit impedance based on the per unit values that we have calculated. So the per unit impedance diagram will then be as follows okay so we have generator one the per unit is j comma zero five per unit and the transformer one is zero comma zero three the line because the line is an inductive line okay so which means there is an inductive impedance so there is a resistive element and an inductive element so we have the per unit value also having both elements represented and then we have a transformer two purely inductive and we have the load per unit values okay so now from here we can then be able to determine the current that's been asked to determine so first that's a current flowing out of the generator and then the current flowing into the transmission line and the current flowing into the load so there's three different current now you will think that because this is a series circuit okay it's it's a network it's it's flowing downstream okay to the load you will think that the currents on all of these sections will be the same no you will be very wrong why because we have transformers so you know the current flowing into the transformer is not the same as the current flowing out of the transformer except if the transformer is a one-to-one -one transformer that's basically means it's neither a step down or a step up transformer basically just an isolation transformer okay now before we continue please i'd like to ask for you to hit the subscribe button right now and gives it a thumbs up for the tutorial if you find something useful i thank you very much okay so now let's move straight ahead and calculate the generator current that's a current flowing out of the generator calculate the generator current and loads current okay so current from the generator will be given by the following formula. So that is I base or I generator. That is going to be equal to SB nu divided by the square root of 3 times V base. Okay, V base is the generator base voltage. Square root of 3 because it's a three-phase current. Okay, so we assume the generator is a three-phase generator. So we have a square root of 3 there. All right. Now, what is SB new? SB new is the value that they say here. Use a generator KVA rating and voltage as the base, as the, as the system base values. So, which means SB new will be the 18 KVA and V base will be the 480 volt of the generator. Now, if you already know all those values, the next thing to do is just to replace it the formula. And you're going to have 18 times 10 to the power 3 divided by the square root of 3 times 4 
80 volt and that's give you 21.65 amp now that's the magnitude of the current that is flowing out of the generator 21.65 amp okay now we move to the next one now the next one is then the current that is flowing into the line now you know there is a step up transformer here now even before you calculate it you you know that according to transformer if you step up the voltage the current must be stepped down so that you can maintain the power transfer so that the power in must be equal to the power out so you step up the voltage you step down the current i mean this is the main reason voltages are stepped up so that the current can be stepped down for long distance transmission because low current means your the cross-sectional of your conductors doesn't have to be big okay and that means there is less heat that's going to be dissipated so you're going to spend less on cables and conductors and so forth okay so now let's find out what's the current on the transmission line but now in order to find the current on the transmission line we have to also know what is the voltage in the transmission line that is the key element because remember the formula also for the line current will be given by sb nu which is the base mv for the entire system and that must be divided by the square root of three times v line now v line exactly will be the voltage that is being transmitted over the transmission line so you can see t1 and t2 there is 1440 volt that's going along this long transmission line here and at the end of the transmission line you're going to have that voltage must be stepped down to a smaller voltage for our load so that is that for that 1440 volt that we're going to replace into our formula and by replacing it, we can see that the current have eventually gone down to 7.21 amps. Okay. Now, the next one is to calculate the current that is now flowing into the, the load. Now, you can see that this current is going to be different from the current that is coming to the transmission line. Because why? We have a step down transformer. Since the voltage has been stepped down, that means the current must shoot up. The current needs to shoot up to maintain transformer properties. So the current given, the current going into the load will then be equal to, so the load current is then given by the formula, I load is equal to SB nu divided by the square root of 3 times V load. Now, the V load here, it says the motor is a 208 volt. Obviously, the V load is the voltage at the secondary, the voltage at the secondary of the transformer. So, replacing the value, we found that I load is 18 times to the power of 3 divided by square root of 3 times 208, and that gives us 49.96 amp, basically 50 amps. So, you can see that the current have fluctuated. Okay, so now the generator is generating at 480 volt, but in order to get that power here from the generator to the load here, we need to step it down because assuming the generator is standing 10 kilometer from where the load is, okay, so we, we then needed to decrease that current from the generator to 7.2 amps for transmission, but then when the current arrive here for the load since our load need more current than the 7.2 amps that was transmitted then we step it back up so we step down the voltage so that the current can go up and we then delivering 49.9 amps to our load and that's basically will be if you calculate the power you can see how much power is being generated how much power is being delivered to the generator by simply calculating sb okay that, that's the load apparent power would then be i load times the square root of three times the v load you're going to find a value of 17.999 basically 18 kilo volt ampere so that basically the same power that is being generated at the generator is now available here on the load side 
but we couldn't transmit that power without stepping it down first for transmission line okay guys so that is it for this tutorial please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel there will be more tutorial of this nature actually fault calculation tutorial will be coming up soon because now imagine if we have a fault at this point okay if we have a fault short circuit current in this point you need to be able to know how much short circuit current will be flowing in this section here and that is what we're going to do in the upcoming tutorial thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial